Here today we're in Boston, Massachusetts. Yes, outside the world famous Eagles Deli. And honestly, I'm here to do the Eagles Deli Challenge and I am probably the most scared I have ever, ever, ever been for a challenge. Why? Because I really hurt my side the other day. I've taken the last couple days off. I'm really not feeling it 100%. So I'm very worried that this is gonna hurt my side and I won't be able to do it. If you're wondering, it's like a muscle, muscle kind of pull thing. So really hoping that we're gonna be okay. But about this challenge. So this is the world famous Eagles Deli Challenge. So this challenge is actually featured on man versus food back in the day. Now the thing is every time somebody beat it, they always increase the size of the amount of burgers, the amount of fries. So right now it is at six pounds, yes, six pounds of beef on this burger. Then you have 24 strips of bacon, 24 strips of cheese. Then there's also served with five pounds of french fries, five pounds. This thing is supposed to total about 12 pounds of food, which is absolutely absurd. You have one hour to complete it. If you do, you get the meal for free. It is a $75 meal. And you also get, I believe it's a hundred or $150 gift card. So anyway, we'll head on in and see what we can do. Uh, many people have done this before, like Joey Chestnut, uh, Furious Pete, um, and again, Adam Richmond. I think, I don't know if he actually did it or not, but back when Adam Richmond did it, it was like a three pound burger. Um, and again, it, it was like, it just, it has been increasing, increasing, increasing in size. So anyway, we'll head on in, wish us luck guys. I honestly, this, I could, I could very well see failing this. I'm really not in good shape. Uh, I'm gonna throw some Tiger Bomb on and uh, wish us luck. Tiger Bomb, you know, is like a numbing agent. So anyway, we ordered it. Let's go have some fun. Let's eat some food. Be with me, dear Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Art Runs are here with the food. An absolutely giant, insane burger, guy. We're talking 12 half pound patties, a whole bunch of cheese, all with half pepper jack, half cheddar, bacon. I asked for them to cook medium. And then we have five pounds of fries. This is definitely like part of the challenge. And apparently, you gotta eat the pickles too. So we do it for an hour. That's about it. All right, so we have the burger on its side. It is, again, just as big. Um, I do have a bottle of ketchup. I'll definitely be utilizing this. I'll probably get some ketchup here, but like I said, it is cooling off, so I need to get started sooner than later. So, like I said, wish me luck. So how about we get started? Let's say the count of five, four. Oh, that is, that is steaming hot. All right, three, two, one, let us eat. Tasty burger. No shortage of juices around, that's for sure. All right, I'm let these patties kind of separate a little bit, kind of cool off, but I definitely want to try to keep them pretty hot. This is going to be a while. First bites are very good though. Hey everyone, welcome to this video. Today we're here at the Eagles Deli. Yes, the legendary Eagles Deli in Boston, Massachusetts. So here we are doing the Eagles Deli Challenge, which was made so famous by the Man vs. Food show, the original with Adam Richmond. So I always love doing these Man vs. Food challenges because they will, well, not only are they legendary and have a legacy behind them, but often there really isn't too many of them left. And those again who are, often hot offer some really high stakes such as this one being about a $100 gift card t-shirt free meal and you know that is for the $85 meal so when Adam Richmond uh, attempted this challenge back in the day it was much smaller being like I think it was three patties just a small fries I'm gonna try not to use my ketchup yet I'm 
sure you get this burger out of the juices as well. The challenge had grown substantially since, and again, previously they actually just continually made it bigger every time somebody beat the challenge. However, they did top it off at the Eagles Deli Challenge being the way it is right now. Maybe better. This is undoubtedly an expert level challenge, and like a high expert level challenge. You legitimately have six pounds of beef, five pounds of fries, 24 strips of bacon, 24 strips of cheese. You literally have 12 pounds of food. This thing is massive. And when it comes to calories, this thing has something like 25,000 calories in it. It is just absolutely absurd. The amount of calories, the weight of this challenge, like this is a challenge I'd say really don't do. Like don't even attempt it. It is, there's nothing healthy about this challenge at all. And we're about four minutes in. I'm not even halfway done the patties. They like literally don't even give you vegetables for the burger. I mean, they give you some pickles, but you know, they, they, there literally is no health in this challenge. Don't do it. Um, but let me know down below if you are a vegetable on burger person. I like veggies on my burger. I like the crisp crunch. I like the textures, you know, some nice flavors of onions and lettuce. But hey, there are people out there that like, you know, maybe the only ketchup or only mayonnaise. So comment down below, hashtag veggies or hashtag no veggies. Um, and ultimately, let's see what you like. I like veggies, like I said, and there was no vegetables to be found. And no, I do not really consider pickles a vegetable. Technically, it is a cucumber, but it is much, you know, very processed and nonetheless, no vegetables to be seen. So this was my first time in the state of Massachusetts, well more specifically like literally stopping in Massachusetts, and I was also going for my first food challenge attempt, so it definitely was not going for an easy win. So I have a triple burger left, triple burger, and here's the freaking monstrous pile of fries, five pounds of fries. I'm going to start working on some of these because I think maybe these all the end get a bad decision. I did decide to do this challenge even though it was very last minute. Uh, generally I do post my travels along my YouTube community tab, often on my Facebook page, and uh, occasionally on my website and my Instagram. But I will say this one I did not post as I did it so, so, so last minute. Um, so everybody in Boston, let me know in the comments down below if you're in Boston and I'll definitely get back. But help me find some new food challenges in Boston. I did, I found there wasn't really many to offer. This was a lot of fries. Like a monstrous pile. And it just keeps going and going. Well, I'm getting through them. Think positive. Let's get this done.
Boston was a super cool city and I really liked my short visit there though, so there's some great footage at the end of Boston, definitely a place I would totally recommend checking out, and you're going to have to check out all the trouble that I got into in Boston. Let's just say Boston is a hell of a place. It's crazy, I feel like I've eaten so many fries, but we're maybe a quarter group. It's a lot. But everybody, I believe that's pretty much all the information, pretty straightforward. Again, we did have 60 minutes to complete the challenge. We were going for that free meal, a gift card, and a t-shirt um, on just this absolute monstrosity of french fries and basically meat. Meat, 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 french fries, and grease. Lots and lots of it. I'm gonna come back to this burger. Let's get this done and I can just focus on the fries. So with that, ultimately, I'll let you get to the rest of the video. Let's see what happens. Hopefully, I will be able to reign victorious, um, considering my injury. And, well, let's just say we knew we were going to be in for a ride. And at this point, I was very much struggling, and it's only going to get worse. So with that, let's tune on in, and let's see what happens. About 15 and a half, maybe. Retrospectively, I wish you would have finished the burger. These are a lot harder to eat now than pulled off.
You have, of course, the cheese slices, which are the same cheese slices. And they use the five pound bag of fries as the whole bag of fries. So they're not like weighing it out. It's just literally rip them, open the whole five pound bag, put it in the fryer. So definitely a hell of a challenge, guys. About 12 pounds of food. That is a lot. Definitely a big challenge. I'm gonna probably get a meal for free. I may be a t-shirt, and then like I said, I think it's about a $100 gift card or something like that, which is pretty cool. Um, so that everyone, hope you enjoyed today's video. Definitely crazy video. Um, I'm glad I was able to do this challenge. I really wanted to. I am in pain, but it is what it is. Lots of Tiger Bomb. Hopefully I don't regret this later. Uh, but with that, guys, that's about it. So of course, till next time, stay happy, healthy, hungry, happy eating. Definitely check out the end of the video where we have lots and lots and lots of Boston footage. Boston's a really, really cool place. I liked it a lot. I definitely do want to come back. Um, and now I finally got the Eagles Deli off the bucket list. This is a challenge I've wanted for years. So, pretty dang cool. Uh, but yeah, so thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, with that, check out joeleats.com. Grab yourself some merch. Also, you can follow my schedule there. This one, I did not post. I did this so last minute, I was not going to do it. But then I realized I'd probably regret if I was in Boston and didn't do it. So, that's it. Just, I love you guys. Have a lovely day. What's up, everybody? And we are officially heading up to Boston. Yes, heading up to Boston. There's a song about that, you know, finding wooden legs. Why well, I didn't find a wooden leg today, but what I did find is an iced coffee, guys. This is my first iced coffee I've had in so, 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 so long. These are not things I drink, and why? Because this is decaffeinated. Yes, that's right, I stopped at a Cumberland Farms, which is a gas station, I got a decaf iced coffee. I decked it out with Splenda, and it is the season, so I got some pumpkin spice creamer in this biznizzle. Pumpkin spice. There you go, guys, you're witnessing an iced coffee with Joel, which is something you don't normally see. All right, everybody, we made it up to Boston. Yes, Boston, Massachusetts, which I found out they don't have freaking Golden Corral up here. Unfortunate, disappointed. But anyway, here we got Boston, really cool looking. Uh, I'm heading now to what they call the... Quarter mile, turn oh. left onto Bedford Street. Red light, yellow light. Um, heading to what they call the Freedom Trail, I believe it's called. Apparently it's like a great place to start being a tourist and stuff. So let's uh, head that way and see some sights. And this is really cool. We have a big Paramount Theater, Paramount Theater, which is all lit up. Here's a, it's supposed to look like the French Quarter, some restaurant, Hades, Hades Town, whatever it is, musical. Um, really cool buildings down here. This is an Avenue de Lafayette, which is a, uh, means like Lafayette, Lafayette Ave, which ultimately would be in French, I kind of forgot about like the Acadian, um, you know, kind of uh, French ancestry of this area. So when you punch it in on Google, the start of the Freedom Trail, this is where it takes you guys. Very, very, very beautiful, large green space. We have a visitor information center right there. We'll definitely hop on in. But this is just stunning. This is absolutely gorgeous. Obviously this is some kind of a great big park. This reminds me of Central Park. There was some park um, that uh, was listed online and they very much talked to being kind of like Central Park. I'm assuming this may be it because it's very, very large. But uh, yeah, beautiful evening. We'll hop on here if they are open and uh, kind of continue on. So yeah. All right, so we're down here and we parked. These are the sights we're seeing. And apparently you just follow this red brick trail and this is what takes you on the trail. So there you go, so just follow the red brick road. That's what we're gonna do. Here we have the Brewer Fountain. It's called the Brewer Fountain Plaza. So it looks pretty cool. Nice little area. I'll take it. This step here says Liberty Mall dedicated October. 27th, 1917, to all our soldiers and sailors of the Great War. And here we have the Massachusetts State House. Obviously, they are under construction, so if you see what they did there, they actually have a big curtain. That's a big curtain right here of what it normally looks like while they do the construction. 
but with the big gold ball top like kind of whatever this is a very you know famous boston picturesque uh kind of noted uh site and then we'll continue to follow on the red brick road here we have robert kudshaw the memorial hopefully you guys there you go now you can see that there so we have a gentleman on a horse with soldiers marching and the sculptor it's a tribute to the soldiers of the civil war there we go and if you follow the brick trail it comes here and it actually ends because it looks like it's been I don't know, essentially covered, but oh, maybe right here. There we go. Here's the path, but it leads right into the state house, which is obviously closed. So I don't know where the next stop will be, but we will find out. Here's a General Hooker uh, monument. Here we have Mary Dyer. Apparently she was a Quaker. If you're not familiar with Quakers are, look them up. Religious freedom. Here's some more uh, sites and buildings to be seen. Like I said, really, really cool looking buildings. The architecture is obviously very, very old. Uh, as we lost the kind of red trail, we're just gonna kind of follow this. I, I have a feeling it would've been through the uh, building itself and continuing on. Plus, I've gotten to see a number of uh, tour buses. Yes, a number. Wow, there's been a number of tour buses circling around the building and also going this way. So I think that's a fair assumption to say, probably this way. But yeah, this is uh, this is pretty cool. Like so far, I gotta say, uh, the kind of Boston and State House and that's right there, State House. You guys, what's up? What's up, guys? Um, this is really unique, really unique. There you go. I'm not really speaking that well today, but let's uh, continue to see what we have to offer. And where we are now is called Ashburton Park. Um, this is to commemorate that train of events which led to the American Revolution and finally secured liberty and independence to the United States. This column is erected by the voluntary contribution of the citizens of Boston. Cool. And then again, some more old looking buildings. I think this is still part, maybe part of the state uh, building, like the front that we saw. They have some kind of, uh, again, either statue, memorial over here. It's shaped like a badge, as you can see there. And then there's this, Massachusetts Fallen Firefighters Memorial. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, very, very nice, very well kept. And this with the big uh, badge is the Massachusetts Law Enforcement Memorial. They have a large number of different names around, and again, a great big badge. This is still the state state house, so it's absolutely giant to be honest. But look at these like this. Look at these old uh, old residences. Like, this is a very obviously very 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 old neighborhood. Um, super cool looking. So yeah, I'm gonna walk a little this way. Again, we haven't officially found the path, but I'll walk a look down here to the intersecting road, and if not, we'll walk on so back. So here we have the government center, which up, like has like a, it's like a train station. Over here is Boston City Hall, the building with the sun on it, Boston City Hall, which is pretty cool. So we are walking in this direction, which is essentially heading us back to the trail where it kind of led off. Um, we're heading back pretty much towards that square. Um, but man, I tell you, just like you can just see how old these buildings are here. I think that's what's the most interesting. They just all have a very old, what I would almost say like European, is that focus? I guess it's focus. Just like a really like old, almost like European, I don't know, vibe to it. And like, like said, some of these are so, so old crazy like look at just like look how old these buildings look and they continue on and they're just super cool but yeah Boston never ever have it been and like down here they have you know I like I don't know how well you guys can see that but if we just zoom in the old 
old buildings continue down there as well. So, man, I think, uh, I think you could spend a lot of time in Boston, to be honest. I think you could spend a lot, a lot of time here to try to see everything. So, I don't think we're gonna get to see, well, we're definitely not gonna get to see everything in the next, like, little bit, but uh, we'll see what we can see. And we made it back to the Freedom Trail, or at least part of it, which it generally, again, goes in here. It's obviously locked. But we have the King's Chapel Burying Ground. So obviously a very, very, very old cemetery and burying ground, continuing into more old looking buildings this way. You're gonna know like all these videos are filmed at the same time with my little finger, my band-aid. Um, and then we have King's Chapel, obviously right here. King's Chapel, a little, little windy. But King's Chapel, which offers apparently Tales from the Crypt, Halloween tours and program. Pretty cool. Let us see what this building looks like. At least here on this red trail. Uh, obviously we kind of missed some of it. Actually, I think over there is where we would have started. Um, and then, uh, but obviously the trail came that way, came from that way, so. Let us see what this looks like. Definitely pretty, pretty substantial. And and we'll continue to follow this red trail for a bit more. And here we have the old city hall. Note the old city hall. Beautiful looking building. Obviously very old. But uh, yeah, and then we guys saw the new city hall, which is kind of over there. But yeah, uh, also some more statues here. Uh, the grounds, that's again the King's Chapel from another angle. And here we have, I don't even know who that is. Joseph. Uh, Quincy, Joseph or Josiah Quincy. We have a mule or like a donkey, and yeah, pretty cool. And here we have two guys which are about to fight, or we're about to throw hands apparently. So we're just gonna <laughs> casually stand here and see if they actually start throwing hands. But anyway, and, and some kind of um, some kind of a memorial here. And as they uh, scream at each other and fight, but you know, yeah, nice memorial and two guys fighting. And here we have what they call Suffolk University. And then a very uh, cool looking square all around. Throw some of that light extra here. There we go. Suffolk University. Uh, and then a big square of more kind of old buildings and such. One State Street. And uh, we're gonna follow this red Freedom Trail a little further. With mindful of my parking, I should have just paid. I should have just put it for the max time. I think put an hour and a half. Should have put it for two hours. But we will uh, continue to get a little bit more before I have to head back. Don't worry about that. Here we have the site of the Boston State Massacre. Uh, I actually don't know the history about that, but March fifth, seventeen seventy. Uh, then, if we follow the Freedom Trail more, it leads this way and that way. And here we have Samuel Adams Memorial, or kind of statue. Oh, that light is, is, is being iffy. But anyway, Samuel Adams nonetheless, notably known for the beer. All right, this is super cool. We have the North Market, the Quincy Market, and the South Market. And again, this is just like a, I don't know, a plaza, a square. I might hop into here real quick, and then we will have to kind of head back. Um, and the Red Brick Road loops back anyway, so. And then a guy singing Ed Sheeran. And inside the Quincy Market, we have a whole bunch of different food vendors. We have fish companies, we have hot dogs, we have pastas, we have cookies and baked goods. Look at these. Look at those cookies. Look at those whoopie pies. That's a thing of the that's a thing of the north. Here we have the uh, Boston and Maine Fish Company, hot butter lobster rolls. That's the official way. The official way to have a lobster roll here in Boston and around the East Coast is just straight lobster on a roll and with butter. Pretty dang delicious.
delicious, and pretty dang good. I'm not gonna have one right now, but there definitely are lots of cool food options here. And yeah, and apparently there's, well, at least it's the Quincy market, so I'm assuming there's some similar in the north and the south. Pretty unique. Oh my gosh, here we go, guys. This is something, this is, this is the key to my heart. Caramel apples. I love caramel apples. Woo wee! Those look good. Here we have a another burying ground. I believe it's called the Granaby. Gran. Uh, I can't really see it from here. But absolutely giant, giant, giant cemetery here across the road. Beautiful kind of church or something going on here. I will say, uh, very like, and just everything. At least, I'm just, I'm in shock. Boston is beautiful, absolutely stunning. Just all the buildings, very old. Greentown Pub, it mentions being a stop for the Boston Marathon, obviously a big uh, notable event each year in, in Boston. Grand Ari Burying Grounds, that's what this is called. But yeah, look at the difference in the, the size of the tombstones. I mean, some of them are, you know, really significant. Some of them are absolutely, you know, very small but just the trees and stuff it's super cool uh, in the fall here Boston kind of has like a little freaky I don't know old-timey cool historic feel All right, well I'm pretty much back to the vehicle again we're running out of parking so it's, we'll probably head out at least for now out of this area I might try to head back a little bit kind of where we were but I gotta say just absolutely stunning absolutely stunning there's not many places what I would call in like I gotta consider this the north. I consider Boston the north. Pretty much I would say anywhere, I don't know, north of like Georgia, we'll call this the north. There's not many places in the north which generally excite me. Just all due respect, I've seen a lot of it. I live it very similarly. I mean, you know, otherwise it's some cities, you know, like New York City, which is cool. It's cool in its own right, but it's a big city. I've seen it before, or it's woods, or, you know, you know, whatever it may be. They're all cool places, right? I, I respect them all, but I gotta say here, this place excited me, guys. Boston is super, super cool. Yes, we're basically back here at this park where we started. There goes a... Uh, ambulance but uh at that i'm gonna have to come back guys and and i have a little bit of time here tomorrow as well i'm gonna try to maybe see some more sights it is getting a little dark out but gotta say it 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 boston's a cool place and i will be back i think i'm identifying what's so cool about boston is i feel like it's i'm straight out of like a mob movie and the, the streets have really funny names too. This one's Kilby, right now I'm on Milk Street. Um, before that we had Chansey, Chansey Street, something like that. Yeah, I think that's what it is. It's just like, I feel like it's straight out of a movie. That's what Boston is. Like, again, like uh, early 1900s, mm, prohibition, you know, mob movie or something like that. I don't know, there's just some vibe to Boston here, which is like, like I said, super freaking cool. Um, I am heading back towards the kind of Sam Adams Brewery, the Sam Adams um, statuary where a moment ago, um, the the hall, there's, I guess it's a, a thing, it's, fa I don't know, it starts with an F, where we were at the Quincy Market and North Market, that area also is at a, a hall, which I saw called, starts with an F, uh, something, something, which um, I guess is also well known. So yeah, I'm gonna head back that area a little bit, and uh, then we'll kind of just kind of just go from there. So let's see what uh, let's see what happens. More super cool looking buildings and Fenuel Fenuel Hall Fenuel Hall. That's what we were uh, just by. Um, but yeah, man, just like look at the old old buildings and stuff we got here. Like pretty, uh, pretty cool. Apparently, this is the financial district north end that way, and the Fanul Hall, which is kind of what we saw where we were. It said Quincy Market, North Market, South Market, which is definitely a cool area. Except like, I'm just going to kind of drive here a little bit. Um, <clears throat> as you can tell, it's getting very dark. It is uh, 6 p.m. Definitely getting shorter days, that's for sure. But uh, I'm going to grab some meat here shortly. But I'm um, glad I was able to get a uh, get a few cool Boston sights in at least. Here we have Christopher Columbus Park and the water is literally right there. We turned into a place called um, the North End and obviously this, one, this is the waterfront there. So I'm gonna see if I can grab a parking spot around here real quick. This definitely looks like a cool area to check out before um, it's dark. 
So let's see what we can do. All right, so we're gonna make this real quick because I did find a parking spot, but it was not a legal parking spot, to be fully honest. But this is so cool. Just look at this, guys. This is called Lewis Wharf by the looks of it. Just, man, just these old buildings is now like what are obviously apartments by the water. It is just so, 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 I don't know, picturesque. It just, like I said, it, it, it just reminds me of a movie. Like, if I was ever going to stage a mob movie, Prohibition, uh, El Capone, you know, whatever, that is just what this looks like to me. And it's so, so, so cool. Um, like I said, there's that little park over there. I will try to get to see a little bit, but at least here I will be able to say I see, I do see, you will see, saw the Boston waterfront, at least a little bit of it, which is pretty cool. So, look at this. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And it's crazy how literally at like 6, 10 p.m. the moon's out and how dark it's getting. But here you go, guys. Oh, there's a plane taking off. And here we have what is some, the Boston waterfront. Cool. I dig. I dig, I dig. Like I said, really cool spot. I'm gonna have to come back. I, uh, I approve. I approve Boston. Yeah, like this right here, like movie set. Think of just look, think of all the fun movies you could have here. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if a lot of movies are actually like filmed in Boston, but if they're not, they could be and should be. Here's an alternate angle of the waterfront. Gorgeous, Boston sail loft. See the sun setting behind some of the buildings. It is just absolutely stunning. Very, very, very pleasant. Again, just all of it just looks so, so old and so cool. It's been, a, like I said, it's been a while since anywhere in the north has really excited me. So, good job, Boston. All right, and here is, I tell you guys, we are here. We're, 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 we're really over, well, we're really exposed there. Make it look like daylight where it's still sunsetting. But, as you can see, Beautiful waterfront. Here we have the Marriott Long Wharf over here. We have this little part of the park that I was looking at, the Boston Harbor Park or whatever it is. And again, just gorgeous. Cool spot. I tell you, it looks a lot more like daylight with, with the exposure up. It looks, uh, looks virtually like daylight in the camera. Um, but I'll just have a quick peek over here, then we're turning around because I don't want to get a parking ticket or towed. So here we are in the middle of the park here. There's lots of green space. Definitely pretty cool. These are really, really nice kind of, uh, I don't know what you even call them, walkways, lights, whatever they got going on. Really cool that it's shaded. And in fact, it's it's has kind of the greenery growing over. So it's kind of like a bit of a tunnel. So super cool about that. Of course, to give you the update, guys, this is what I, Joel, looked like at the Boston waterfront, in case you're wondering, by a big, big orange light. There we go, that's what we look like. Of course, the waterfront in the background, very beautiful, very stunning, pretty dang cool. So yeah, like I said, that's uh, at least some of what we saw in Boston. Um, I like it. I have no complaints. Again, really like this kind of covered archways. I guess what I'll call a covered archway. Uh, really unique here, we're walking into it. It's all green and treed up and anyway, here we got Joe's, Joe's here at the water. And uh, that's the restaurant in case you're wondering, Joe's. And uh, at that, that's that. Anyway, saw the guy taking like the parking instructor or whatever parking attendant taking picture of the license plate. I did tell him, I said, hey man, I'm moving, I'm moving. Uh, he didn't put a visual ticket on the thing. All he said to me was resident only. So hopefully that means we don't have a ticket coming our way. Prefer not. He didn't put one on the car anyway. And didn't really want to talk. I asked him how his day was, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't having it. So I don't know. Well, hopefully no ticket coming our way.